Today we're looking at another tablet by Doogie or Doogie, depending on where you're from. This is their new T20 model for 2023. I want to thank them for sending this over to review on the channel. I'll leave a link down below with current pricing and more information. It's got a 10.4 inch IPS 2K display that's fully laminated, 320 nits brightness. It's got eight gigabytes of RAM, but also seven gigabytes of virtual RAM. Also has 256 gigabytes of storage, expandable up to one terabyte with a micro SD card. Comes with the Unisoc T616 processor. Also comes with Android 12 right out of the box. It's got a quad speaker setup, pretty thin as well, 7.9 millimeters, 470 grams. It's got 18 watt fast charging, 8300 milliamp hour battery. This one also comes with a cover and stylus. Plus they've got a keyboard case for this as well. It's got a 16 megapixel rear facing camera, 8 megapixel front facing. Also has dual band Wi-Fi so you got 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. As you can see it comes with a case. You've also got user manual, warranty information. You've got a USB-C to USB-C charging cable. Looks like you will need an adapter if you get this in the United States, or you can just use a different charging brick altogether. You've got your removal tool for the micro SD card or SIM card. Always a little confusing to me, they include a regular ink pen. They also sent along a separate stylus as well, so we'll go ahead and try that out. sort of hard to get the sticker off the back there. Luckily you can get most of the residue off with a wet wipe. And I gotta say this tablet actually looks pretty nice here on the back. Sort of a blue gray metal material. I kind of like how they're doing the camera and the flash here on the back. There in the bottom you've got two speakers, USB-C charging port, and your micro SD card or SIM card slot. Power and volume buttons there on the right hand side. And then pogo pins there in the bottom for the keyboard. So overall, pretty nice build quality on here. Might be kind of hard to tell in the video, but you do have the front facing camera there on the long side there in the center. You'll also notice the pre-installed screen protector there as well. Now the stylus they sent over actually seems to work pretty good on here. Of course, with this tablet, you're not going to have to worry about storage. It looks like it's only using 12 gigabytes of the 256, which should last quite a while. When it comes to the navigation, you've got several different options here. You can choose which order the buttons are in, or you can hide the navigation bar altogether. Also, there's not a lot of pre-installed apps on here. It looks like mostly the ones from Google. Also, by default, you don't have an app drawer on here, so it just sort of puts everything on the home screen. But luckily, you can switch that over if you want. Then all you have to do is just swipe up, and there's all of your apps. Up in the notification shade, you've got most of your typical stuff here. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, auto brightness, airplane mode, auto rotate, screen record, flashlight, eye comfort mode, hotspot, screencast, do not disturb, invert colors, uh, in nearby share. There's also a handful of other things you can add on there as well, uh, like ultra saving mode, dark theme, extra dim, focus mode, storage, and alarm. You can also turn on the virtual RAM if you want there in the settings as well. Looks like there is a software update, so I'll go ahead and do that. Nice thing is, it looks like it's got the stock wallpaper app from Google, which I like. There's quite a few options in there. And there's even a handful to choose from that they put on this device. And then you can also choose your accent colors to match the wallpaper as well. You've also got a dark theme shortcut there. Then when you swipe left of the home screen, you're going to get the Google Discover newsfeed. Overall, I like this software, very similar to stock Android. You can also use the other tip of this stylus as well. One downside to this stylus is you have to charge it with micro USB instead of USB-C. Now, if you just look at the specs of this tablet online, it actually says this is Widevine L1 for apps like Netflix. But I'm not sure if that's only certain regions. The one I have says Widevine L3 with SD playback resolution. Up to 1080p resolution for YouTube videos. It may not be a huge deal for some people, but it's something I thought I would point out. Now, as far as this keyboard case goes, actually pretty decent quality. And there's a lot of other tablets in this category that you don't have a keyboard case for. So definitely a nice option to have in my opinion.
I'm not sure if I'm a fan of the rougher texture on the trackpad, but it seems to work fairly decent. And you've got shortcuts there along the top. So overall, not too bad as far as a keyboard case goes. Screen quality on here actually looks pretty decent as well. Could be a little better on viewing angles, but overall pretty nice contrast. And it feels like it's just bright enough for indoor use. So this is gonna be fine for watching movies, TV shows, playing games, or reading on here as well. I also ran my typical battery drain test just to see how it did. And it's pretty similar to the T10 tablet lasting about six and a half hours at 100% screen brightness before dying completely. So just above average compared to other tablets that I've tested. When it comes to performance, it looks like a slight improvement over the T10 tablet by Doogee. Again, very comparable to a Galaxy Tab A8. Not quite as powerful as the Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, but it does feel pretty quick just moving around the software. I don't see any kind of lag or delay when doing stuff on here. And it's nice to have the expanded RAM option on here, even if that's only gonna help in certain situations. When testing out games like PUBG Mobile, Asphalt 9, and Apex Legends Mobile, everything seemed to be fairly smooth. The graphics don't look quite as good as on more expensive tabs tablets, but overall not bad considering the price. I think most people will enjoy gaming on here. Obviously it's going to depend on what games you're playing as far as how good they're going to look on here. Just keep in mind, this is more of an entry level tablet when it comes to performance and gaming. Good thing about this tablet is you've got two speakers on each side and they're nice and loud. So that's always good to see. Here's a quick sample just to give you an idea of what they sound like. Now you've got quite a few options here in the camera app. You've got panorama, pro, capture, video, slow motion, time lapse, and then you also have QR code under more. But as far as quality goes here in my studio lighting, it actually looks pretty good. And then you can go up to 1080p resolution, 30 frames per second when it comes to video recording. Here's a few quick samples just to give you an idea of what the video and photo quality is like on the T20 tablet by Doogee. As you can see, camera and video quality on here may not be the best out there. I usually don't expect a lot out of tablets, especially in this category, but overall you could probably get by if you had to use this for Zoom meetings, other video conference calls. I kind of wish the resolution was a little higher on the front facing camera, but it is what it is. I know not everyone uses their cameras on tablets, but I still like to test them just to see how they do. Probably a little better than I was expecting. And it does feel like a slight upgrade over the T10 tablet. Now if I already had the T10 tablet, I'm not sure that I would upgrade to this one because there's a lot of similarities. Overall, pretty decent quality on this one and it feels like you get pretty good value for the price. So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.